Okay, so some uh, history to why to, uh, I met David Karmaturi, who was then the dean of the School of Commercial in uh, Valparaiso at a meeting in 2009. And uh, I had just presented a paper. I was a full bride to Malaysia too in 2003. And I had just presented a paper on uh, management motives and financial reporting fraud at, uh, at a Latin American business conference. So David came back uh, and, and ta started talking to me and said, Saki, we should do something like this in Chile. That was in 2009. And then, uh, then he told me that uh, Chile was adapting international financial reporting standards. That is, uh, they're trying to converge all these accounting standards and Chile was adapting it. So I was actually interested in that because U.S. was wanting to do the same. So I said, uh, I continued the conversation with him. He's trying to engage me in research and I'm trying to learn more about international financial reporting standards. And uh, one led to another and I started bringing students here from my university to, to Chile to understand what this adopting international standards means to Chile. And one thing led to another in our friendship group, and he gave me some data, and I published a paper, and he really thought that this man can do something, so that's why I'm here. I hope I know the press here. Okay. So I come up from teaching school, and he has actually visited me there, and he had seen how I teach. He wanted me to definitely do both teaching and research, so I'm not here on teaching and research. <coughs> Highlight my research, and then this service goal is becoming, later on I'll tell you a bit more about that, that's becoming all consuming right now. Uh, so one thing I observed in Chilean companies is they are very different from US companies in many ways. Uh, the, first, the first difference is ownership. Ownership in Chile is uh, very concentrated. Concentrated to an extreme level, for instance, in Malaysia, the ownership is around 30% owned by families. In Chile, it's more than 50% owned by families. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering why, why do you don't need that level of concentration to control a company? Later on, I'm learning a little about why that happens, but anyway. <laughs> so, and then, when you have that level of concentration, they really don't care much about efficiency, input, some sort of input to output ratio, and that's performance for an accountant. And then this whole concept of management accounting, they just, they don't focus on management accounting from an efficiency point of view. They're all very technical. In other words, they say, let's do budgeting. Let's do uh, pricing. They really don't think of it from a process, business process mindset uh, that, that I come from. So. So how do you understand it from a, you know, in a, in a, my terminology is value adding processes. Does this process add any value? And if you go back to Asia, China, particularly the customer orientation, you know, one thing I notice about Chilean customer service people is if they think that I can't speak Spanish, they will turn away. That's the end of the service. Uh, they are very, very shy, I don't know, very, fearful of talking English, or only talking English, so I always had to speak Spanish all the time when I come to Chile. So I, I realized that that kind of uh, value-based orientation to running a business is very important. And these are some new concepts in the, in the, in, in the U.S. Uh, process-based, activity-based management uh, that, I, that, I, that I'm going to be co-teaching. Again, information systems, it is very, very difficult. Uh, uh, enterprise resource planning systems are very common in the US. They're all integrated. One thing about an enterprise resource planning system is we call it modules. The accounting module talks to the customer module. That happened about 10 years ago, <coughs> 20 years ago in the US. That still hasn't happened in, in Chile. They are still legacy systems. They purposely keep the accounting system. The accounting system is very domineering in, in Chile, very different and separate from every other system. 
and budgets drive everything for one, one that reason. And so they don't know how to improve performance because one system is not talking to the other. And now if you think about what's happening is Walmart has bought leader. So US companies are coming in here and, and I'm not sure how long they're going to tolerate these legacy systems. So it is important for the students to kind of pick in a very integrated way when they learn. So again, case study pedagogy, you know, I, I, you know Butler is most itself for experiential learning and they're sending you to Harvard School to you know, learn how to do case, case studies. So that's another thing that they would like. He has come and studied my classes and he wants me to do kind of case studies of how to implement these things in a company. So, so teaching, I would say, is going to be at least 30% of what I do. At the graduate level, again, he wants me to do some case studies uh, on how to measure performance and make decisions. My research tends to focus on governance and financial reporting. So I'm interested in governance in Chilean companies. It is, it is very complicated. Uh, it's very difficult, for instance, to figure out how many independent directors do they have on the board. Now, that is something in China, in Asia, they require the firm to disclose. They call it non-executive directors, and they require that disclosure. In Chile, they don't tell you how many independent directors are on the board, but the SVS, SVS is equivalent to the SEC, Supreme and Valores, require uh, the require the companies to disclose how many independent directors are on an audit committee. So they don't say how many independent directors are on the board, but they create this subcommittee. Uh, and Superintendent Valore says, in this subcommittee, you should have majority independent directors. So in other words, I have to work backwards. So that's one way. And then uh, Superintendent Valore also has a list of independent directors. Uh, and then, so I have to go back and see in this list, where is he? So you know, it, it's it's connecting the dots is is uh, is very difficult. But but as I said, David is very keen. The reason they are keen on uh, accounting research is it's a new thing in Chile. There have been a lot of economics economics professors who are very well known who have looked at uh, this divergent ownership and economic performance or market value, but they have not brought it down to the micro of running a board, running an audit committee, looking at auditors, looking at independence. So that's what accounting research goes kind of to the micro level. So my research, so this is, you know, this is, since this is a new area, and I just, I'm just helping, and PUCV wants to become a research-oriented <laughs> school, and everybody, it's not, they just don't want me to just do a paper. They want me to have kind of research streams so that everybody in the school can get involved. And I'll tell you the service companies will be getting quite interesting. Uh, if you go back to Chile, actually for the longest time, till about 1980s, it was you know, centralized planning and a tax driven civil law system. Uh, before that, it was a British law system, but some, at some point it turned into a civil law system. And, and in a civil law system like a German law or a French law, it's very tax oriented, uh, the way of keeping books. And if you look at why ownership is concentrated, is they have something known as the imputation tax system. In other words, it is much more, there's more incentive to pay your company than pay you, because if you pay you, you don't get the tax deduction. So what happens is a director will actually set up a service company and he will get paid, the service company will get paid, and he will draw his needs from the service company. So, so because, the, because the service company can get the tax deduction. Because of this imputation tax system, it has created a lot of complications of how companies are even structured to take the additional benefits of imputed taxes. So the whole issue of tax avoidance and how it is governed is very unique to Chile. And, uh, and I have done some tax research in, in Asia too. 
and I find that political connection is a key issue in Asia. Uh, now, trying to figure out political connections and ownership is a very interesting thing in, uh, in, uh, in Chile. I uh, was just speaking to the tax group, and I told them in Asia, you know, I've tried to measure political connection by which party uh, to a particular director or CEO belong to. You can kind of figure that out. Because there are not too many parties in, in China or Malaysia. Whereas, <laughs> whereas here, uh, there are so many parties and, and nobody, and it is done in a very convoluted way, you know. Uh, so, so one way we have just started doing is just, we only have about 100 companies that really have public listing and enough data. So just search Google and see whether any of the directors have been written up for their political connections. And most of the time what you're finding is it's it's one company in this whole holding structure that has been pulled up for giving money to politicians. But then do we see, does this one company influence the rest of the holding company? So you know it's figuring these things out, what is political connection, how ownership, how implication of taxes. These are all very new. Maria Theresa fortunately UCB has very influential people. Uh, she is. Uh, she was a tax practitioner, a tax lawyer, and a JD, as we call it, in the U.S. So she knows practice very well. Again, all these people know practice very well, but trying to conceptualize into what is tax avoidance, how do you measure it, what is political connection, how do you measure it. So that's kind of. This has been done in other parts of the world, but to bring it down. This other research is already. Again, auditing independence is a very interesting issue in Chile. They take a look at partner change as independence. So SVS says you have to change, the auditor has to rotate at least every five years. When you look at what auditor rotation means, is rotating the partner, not the auditor. So, <laughs> so, so we have two person audit firms who still keep switching uh, the clients. So does that, does that really mean independence? Now in the US, of course, it won't pass master. So this is, again, a, a really interesting issue on auditor change and earnings quality and audit quality and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then try to, so my main role would be to help them to come up with proxies to measure these in a Chilean context and, and tell them the literature because, as I said, these are very practitioner-oriented people. They don't understand the literature, so to speak. Uh, so you know, I'm putting a Google Drive with all these papers on this stream and this stream, and trying to have uh, discussions once a week on each of these groups. The last one is corporate social responsibility. This is another issue. Uh, Chileans like to pride themselves of being very responsible citizens. So in fact, SVS require them to disclose something they know as 365 or 360. It requires the company to disclose their charitable funds. So what does influence all that? So at least these three mainstreams of research that I have published, uh, particularly based out of Asia, uh, which is similar, but unsimilar in many ways too. So that's driving, you know, so I have at least actually four research groups and I meet with them. One group on Tuesday, one group on Wednesday, and, you know, and oftentimes they like to meet after four, you know, and I have a wife who will be waiting for me <laughs> all day. So, so they, they tend to, you know, uh, very, very relaxed uh, way of, but this is, this is, uh, this has more or less gone ahead. Uh, you see me, uh, actually David and a group of people came to Malaysia, where I go, and I took them to the institutions in Malaysia, and there is what is known as a minority shareholder watchdog group in Malaysia. They visited the minority shareholder watchdog group, and they liked it so much, they wanted to start one here in Chile. And I think they applied for a federal grant, national grant in one of these uh, grants to get some money, and that's getting delayed. But yesterday, uh, David stopped by and said, David at some time had been the vice president of the university. So he said, uh, Sakti, do you know when the best time to go talk to the president? 
I said, so did you know? He actually comes out to smoke. And I was having a smoke with him. And he told me that uh, the university has approved the grant for $50 million to start the minority show of the watchdog. So now he wants me to kind of write a prospectus for this uh, institute that he wants to start so that he can kind of get matching funds from AFP, AFP uh, uh, private pension fund. So this is taking a life of its own of writing a prospect is one of the easiest things to do. Uh, so yeah, so this is a service thing that I'm doing, help them to start up this institute that is now going to accumulate all this data of all the companies in terms of how the ownership is structured, how the political connections are set up, how the tax avoidance, you know, what are the effective rates. So one of the main things I'm going to help is to help them set up a database for these institutes so that all the accounting researchers who want to do accounting research in Chile can get access to this. So this is a service role that I'm doing, I think. And this I'm interested in, and this whole issue of entrepreneurial orientation and business climate in Chile. There are some the accounting school is one of the oldest schools, so it, it's like more than a crown jewel in PUCV. This commercial engineering is a separate school, that's where the MBA is. And they are interested in doing some management work and also working with the institute. So I told them we can do something about the business climate and how entrepreneurially oriented children in uh, different parts of the country are. Yeah. So this is a well established stream of research too. So this is, I don't have pictures, but I'm really I'm kept busy uh, with what they want me to go. Of course, I'm taking a Spanish class. My wife is taking a Spanish class. She's a little more scared than me. I took a few classes before I came. I probably, they, they tell me that there are similar good accounting institutions in Argentina and Brazil, so David says, we like this institute to host not only Chilean data, but even see whether we can host Argentinian, Brazilian data. That is good because you need a big sample if you want to publish in top tier journals. So, so I like that. So I'll be telling him, tell let me know when am I going to Argentina or Brazil, and I'll probably apply for that post grant, uh, grant that travel grant that they have, and I know for sure. Uh, as I said, these friendships is what started it, and the friendships were what you know, what last long. You don't have to end on because you can see I'm working with so many people on so many areas. So that's that's what I'm up to. Okay. You want me to take questions? Unless you really like it, unless until you get into it, it looks very boring from the outside. Well, it looks like you have quite a lot of experience in the field, but a lot of these issues are, um, especially entrepreneurship and innovation, and this whole idea of philanthropy versus social impact investing and corporate social responsibility are all issues that we work quite a bit on with the embassy and would love to be able to draw you in um, if we can ever get you away from your <laughs> many, <laughs> many other responsibilities, but uh, all huge think, issues uh, here in Chile. Uh, David is God sent for me, you know, I, you know he, I don't go to a meeting without him because these are all controversial issues. Yes. So, yes. So I, issues, know, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. So, I just, I told, I tell him, I'll always listen to you. <laughs> These issues are so picky that, uh, that uh, but he, he says, but he always encourages, go for it, you know, don't worry about the controversy, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you tell us how, how it should be done, and we do agree on something. So, yeah, so every time, you know, if you want me to come and if he thinks I'm free, I'll. <laughs> so you mentioned that you know a lot of, there's a lot of detective work in, in determining who's responsible for what. Um, how would you how would you suggest the 
best way of going about that? I mean, so yeah, so the best way to go about it is first of all, you can't apply what is applied in the Western world directly to to developing country. That's what that's the first thing I learned when I started doing research in Asia. Okay. And then uh, when you do research, each country is different. Uh, in Asia, you find dominant political parties, whether it's the Communist Party or in Malaysia, the Uno Party. And so there are dominant parties. And, and it is much easier to keep an eye on what the dominant party is doing. You know, you can figure out what's going to happen to the country. Whereas in Chile, democracy does work, but then you have very powerful Piniera versus uh, Bachelet. Versus, these are very powerful philosophical differences. A very wealthy man versus a very socially oriented uh, female. Uh, so, so they have their strong views of what is right and what is wrong. And, and then if you look at their history, as I said, if you look at the accounting history, British child accounting, which is what I am, used to run this place. Then it became a centralized government. Then it adopted, uh, but at some point, the last period, it adopted US generally accepted accounting principles. Mm -hmm. So before it became international financial reporting, it adopted US. So most of the students do know the US gap. Uh, when I talk about it, that's not foreign to them. So, so it is a, there is this history and culture that comes to clashes with personalities. So yeah, so that's why you cannot do this research outside of Chile. You really have to be embedded to find out you know, what is driving what. Sure. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Uh, I guess we're in the Thank you. Thank you so much.